Question number three, Kevin Haig. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Conservation and asks, does she agree with Forrest and Bird that many endangered species will meet a watery death or be rudely shunted from their homes if the Mokihinui Dam is given the green light? The Hon. Kate Wilkinson. Uh, Mr Speaker, in the resource consent hearing, the Department of Conservation did submit that the dam would involve significant disruption to threaten native wildlife. I have seen no reason to doubt the Department's analysis. Kevin Haig. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Can she confirm that the public conservation land that would be flooded by the dam is home to 16 species of threatened indigenous birds, four species of threatened lizards, three subspecies of threatened land snails and several species of nationally threatened plants? The Hon. Kate Wilkinson. Uh, but Mr Speaker, I can confirm that the area referred to by the member is it does have some threatened native wildlife. But what I would like to emphasise is that there is currently no application before the Department of Conservation. Kevin Haig. Mr Speaker, can she confirm that the dam will not be able to proceed unless she agrees to swap the Mokihinui land for some other land of higher conservation value? The Hon. Kate Wilkinson. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I just say again, Mr Speaker, that there is currently no application before the Department of Conservation. As the potential decision maker, it is not advisable for me to make public comment on the merits or otherwise of any hypothetical proposal that may be put to the Department. Kevin Hay. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Kevin Really, the, the point of the question is as to whether or, whether or not the Minister agrees that actually her consent is required for the, for the dam to be able to proceed. And the Minister doesn't address that point in her answer. Well, it appeared to me that what the Minister was saying was it wasn't in the public interest for her to comment further on the specificity of the issue. Now, that's solely for the Minister to judge uh, on that matter. I can't overrule a Minister if they argue it's not in the public interest to comment further on such a, spe a specific matter. Now, Kevin Haig, supplementary question. Supplementary question. Does the Minister accept the Department of Conservation's advice that, and I quote, the public conservation land within the Mokihinui River has such high value that it is most unlikely to be suitable for exchange at all? And if so, why wait for a revised proposal from Meridian before ruling out a land swap? The Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Mr Speaker, it would be inappropriate for, to answer that question because, in effect, it may be looking to prejudge the merits of an application if, indeed, an application is made. There is no such application at the moment. Kevin Haig. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. If she won't rule out a land swap now, will she at least ask her colleague, the Minister of State-Owned Enterprises, to encourage our company, Meridian Energy, to make its land swap proposal before the matter comes up in the Environment Court next year, saving us all a lot of time and money. The Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Mr Speaker, there is no land swap or land exchange application at the moment. If indeed in the future there is one, then that will be considered under the, normal, under the usual provisions of the Conservation Act, the Conservation General Policy and other relevant statutory documents such as the West Coast Conservation Management Strategy. Until an application is made, Mr Speaker, I cannot comment further. Point of order, Mr Point Speaker. Order, I'm Kevin not Hay. asking the Minister to, to comment on, on a land swap proposal. I accept that she's, that, that, uh, she's not going to do that. My question was about a conversation with her colleague, the Minister of State-Owned Enterprises, and she hasn't addressed that point at all. Well, again, it's a, I apologise, Honourable Member, but it's a difficult thing for me to ask the Minister to be more specific when the Member's asking a hypothetical question. I mean, she can't until she knows what might happen, tell the member whether or not she feels the need uh, in the future to have a conversation with a colleague. I think the member's got to be reasonable. When asking hypothetical questions, it's very difficult to pin a minister down because the circumstances aren't precisely known. Speaking to the point of order, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the question is not hypothetical at all. 
It doesn't require a land swap proposal to be on the table at all. It's, it's simply recognising the legal fact that actually the Minister's consent will be required at some point, uh, and therefore uh, a conversation with her colleague, the Minister of State Owned Enterprises, makes sense now to obviate the need for an Environment Court proceeding. Well, that may be the member's view, but it may not be the minister's view. And when asking this type of question, uh, there's no specific answer. Now, the member may be seeking a particular answer, but I can't, I can't ask a minister to give a particular answer with a hypothetical question like that. Really, the minister has a fair bit of freedom as to how they answer that, and she has covered the issue. But it, I accept fully that she's not satisfied the member, but I can't assist with that kind of question. Kevin Haig. A supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Uh, is the Minister familiar with Hydro Development Limited's uh, Stockton Hydro Scheme, which would be enough to make the West Coast self-sufficient in power, and can she comment on its likely conservation impact compared to that of the Mokihinui Dam? The Hon. Kate Wilkinson. Uh, Mr Speaker, I am aware of other uh, alternative possible hydro schemes. I'm not a hydro scheme expert, but in relation to the... <laughs> in relation to the Mokanui, can I can I just order order the Honourable Kate Wilkinson is answering. It is very difficult, Mr. Speaker, to make comment on on, on a hypothetical application that doesn't exist, and it's difficult to make uh, to consent to an application that indeed does not exist. Question. Uh, yeah, supplementary, Mr. Kevin Haig. Yeah. How does the Minister think New Zealanders will feel to learn during Conservation Week that our own company, Meridian Energy, may flood 300 hectares of pristine conservation land, putting at risk more than 20 threatened species, when there is a perfectly good alternative scheme that would meet the West Coast power needs? Now, will Kate Wilkinson. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think that New Zealanders will think that at the beginning of Conservation Week for, our, for a rowie, one of our rarest kiwis to have been hatched uh, and was unscathed by the earthquake and is now named Richter, will, give the, will, will put a smile on the face of many New Zealanders as to the importance of conservation in New Zealand. Question number four. The